Hello everyone. In this video, um, I want to talk about a concept that ICT just brought up in his video that he came out with tonight. And I guess I'm going to beat every um, beat every third party to it because I'm going to be um, probably the first third party to talk about it. Um, so as you know, I trade the ICT silver model setup or the silver bullet setup which means that I'm only looking to enter the marketplace in four defined time periods which is 20 hundred to 2100 and that's my own invention that's Asia um, and then 0300 to 0400 which is uh, London and then 10 hundred to 1100 uh, which is uh, New York AM and then 1400 to 1500 which is New York PM now those setup times give me a framework in which to look for an entry model. Okay, the entry model that you're looking for in during these setup times is an inefficiency, so volume imbalance, fair value gap, liquidity void, etc. But oftentimes, if you are um, getting that inefficiency and things are working out as planned, you're going to see other ones of ICT's models are going to form. Uh, at the expected time, which is breaker blocks, order blocks, mitigation blocks, turtle soups, all that good stuff. So my rules of engagement is my entry models, okay, my entry models are at those four time frames looking for an inefficiency, as you know. Now, the key part of the ICT silver model setup is not really the entry, it's the exit. And the exit needs to be at a liquidity target, which is a prior low or a prior high, um, or near it. Near it, um, it's where you're drawing to. It's where you think that price is going to draw to. Now, one of the things that I haven't thought about before, but makes a lot of sense, is you can see that I block out the setup times on my uh, trading view chart here. And they roughly correlate with when the session times are. They're basically session opens. But go out on a 30 minute time frame, or let's go out to a 15 minute time frame. The topic of this video is going to be describing highs and lows um, by describing highs and lows by session. And let me see, I need to go to a different template so that. Uh, So, here in the 15 minute time frame, and this is a clean chart, now let me get the executions off. Every single high and low can be described by time. It can be described by a session in which it formed. Now, if for some reason it formed outside of a session, that would be pretty crazy, but Typically, these are, these are going to be paired with a session. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to tell you the session times okay, that, I, that I'm using. I'm not going to write them on the screen. Um, you're going to need to put some work into this if you are listening to me and you're trying to learn. You're going to need to pull up a notepad application on your computer or you're going to need to pull up notes on your phone, um, whatever. During the 24-hour banking cycle, I use uh, six sessions, okay, that's six. And I'm about to tell you the times, so get, uh, get ready. London AM, which is 0200 to 0500, always in New York local time, that's London AM. London PM, which is 0500 to 0930, and that's obviously U.S. equities open. New York AM, which is 0930 to 1200. That's New York AM. New York Lunch, which is 1200 to 1330. Again, that's 1200 to 1330. That's an hour and a half or 90 minutes for lunch, not 60 minutes, an hour and a half. 
New York PM, which is 1330 to 1600, 1330 being the New York PM session opening, and 1600 being the New York Stock Exchange close. The final session trading time is 2000 or uh, 8, 8 PM to 2230. Again, that's 2000 to 2230. That's the two and a half hours of the Tokyo Stock Exchange AM session. It will also encompass uh, Sydney, Australia, Wellington, New Zealand, Shenzhen, Hong Kong trade during this time as well, so does Shanghai. Now there is an Asia PM session that's after that, but um, for simplicity's sakes, I'm, I'm going to keep the session times at 6. Every one of these highs and lows can be um, correlated with a session time. Okay, So let's start marking these out. Let's start, we are on Japanese yen futures, and I wanted to use something other than stock indices to show you that these things work. So notice when the highs are forming, and then we can uh, describe the highs and lows. So 0945, this is going to be New York AM. Say New York AM L, so that's New York AM low. Okay, this high formed at 0715. We know that's London... London PM. Okay, London PM H. What I'm doing here is I'm I'm classifying these highs and lows by the session in which they form. Okay, that's uh, this one is at fourteen thirty, so that's going to be a New York PM. New York PM H. And then um, let's take any other. Let's see here. 1745 is not going to be in a session time, so we're not going to use, or sorry, 1945 is going to be just before a session time, so I'm not going to use that. Um, And then, let's see, this little intermediate term low here, uh, we're going to put that right at New York PM low. So this low right here that I'm highlighting with the cursor formed at 1300. I'm sorry, that's going to be a New York lunch low. It's actually not going to be the New York lunch absolute. Uh, yeah, the low formed right on the opening of lunch. So we're just going to call this New York lunch short-term low. Okay, so these swing points form during session times. So we're going to mark these out. The two parts of the process are finding an entry using an inefficiency uh, during the setup time. The second part, and really the critical part, is the draw on liquidity. The draw on The draw on liquidity, where price is reaching for. Okay. And we're going to call this London AMH. Now this also goes into uh, market profiles and you can use this for many things. Let's go down uh, and show my executions and let's build a narrative. So, working on our 15 minute time frame, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to circle what I'm talking about here. Okay. Once you have your entry model, you need to look and figure out where price is drawing. Now, when price draws to liquidity, the very first thing that you should know is that it does not always mean that it's actually going to run that high or low. A draw on liquidity could end at the consequent encroachment of a wick. It could also end at a rejection block, meaning that we call that a failure swing, basically. It doesn't necessarily mean that these highs and lows, just because price is drawing to these pools of liquidity, 
price might get close to it, draw to it, and then reverse without actually taking it out. A lot of times it is going to take out these highs and lows, but um, there's plenty of examples where it doesn't. And you should notice when price is actually failing to trade into that pool of liquidity, so a failure swing. You should definitely keep that, um, keep that note in your head because you'll know for, for the future reference oh, that's where they left liquidity intact. So maybe later on, they might want to come back and target that pool of liquidity. So classifying these um, time frames or these highs and lows by session time, we can then build a narrative. So the Japanese yen futures were trading down and they created at 1.45, so Wednesday, the 21st of June, at 01.45, uh, and I'm just calling that, that's 15 minutes before the London AM actually starts. That's... Um, during the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, but I'm gonna, we're just gonna call that the London AM low. It's 15 minutes before. As we traded back in to a bearish order block that was formed uh, just after the midnight, um, the midnight resettlement period, the London AM session formed a high. It formed a high at spot 007115. At that point, we broke down. We traded lower. I'm not gonna look to the left, and then. During the London AM session at 0415, okay, we formed a low. We formed a low at 0071315. Uh, now, one thing that you should know is that New York obviously has a huge market. That there's no doubt about that. But you can't discard, especially in forex. London is really the capital of forex. There's a huge amount of volume orders, institutional order flow that's going to come in and use the London time frame, especially when you're trading Forex. So you have to be aware of what London is doing, even though you're a an American trader, for example. Okay, so our London AM high came in at spot 007155. Okay, we start with that narrative. We then trade it down and our London AM low, which was probably drawing into some other, we're not going to look to the left for this example. Our London AM low came in at spot 0071315. At that point, price reversed. It formed a balanced price range, traded into that balanced price range. Okay, Traded into that balanced price range. It formed a bearish order block on the way up, or sorry, bullish order block. So you can see high, highlighting with my cursor. We then traded higher and we swept, okay? We did not run, but we swept the London AM high during the London PM session. And what was that? That high came in at 007, spot 0071555, okay? Which is one tick above. If it's one tick above, it's a sweep, not a run. Again, one tick above is a sweep, not a run. The London PM high swept the London AM high. So it just barely ticked into where there would be a liquidity pool. At that point, price formed a turtle soup pattern. A turtle soup pattern is where price sweeps a prior high or low and then reverses. We then get a displacement lower. At this point, we have a strong feeling that this is going to be ICT's seek and destroy market profile. What is a seek and destroy market profile? When you see the same session Okay, our London session here is breaking its own internal highs and lows. So it's trading into both sell side and buy side liquidity pools. You know that at that point, okay, this is a seek and destroy profile. What is a seek and destroy profile going to do? Well, once we know that this London PM high swept the London AM high, at that point we have a very strong idea that it's probably going to want to come down and run or sweep the London AM low. That right there, that information right there could get you a very healthy trade. So what does price end up doing? Price ends up forming bearish PD arrays, okay, bearish order block here that price respects. It, it wicks above, but the bodies of the candle respect. Then trade lower, creating a displacement and a measuring gap or a fair value gap here, a, um, a, a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency here that I'm highlight, highlighting with the cursor. Because we know that this is likely a seek and destroy profile, if we're trading around here, we have a strong inclination at this point that the London AM low is probably going to be actually run. It's probably not going to stop 
at the consequent encroachment of this of this London AM low wick, it's probably actually going to run down and trade into that London AM low liquidity pool. Again, that's because we've identified this as a seek and destroy profile. At 0945, which is shortly after the New York equity market opened, the Japanese yen futures formed a low. Okay, we traded um, a certain distance, I'm not going to look at it, a certain distance below the London AM low, and we formed a low at um, spot 007121 during the New York AM session on Wednesday. Okay. At this point, if we start to see bullish arrays, we have a strong inclination. If this is Wednesday and it's trading in the middle of the week and price is forming a low here, we, we then go back to ICT's weekly profiles and we say, okay, we have a seek and destroy profile here coming in on Wednesday. At this point, we're probably looking at a consolidation week, right? That's just a little bit more advanced theory for you. Once price here forms a volume imbalance that I'm highlighting with my cursor, that price fails to trade back into, that's a solid sign that we're probably looking at uh, we're probably looking at a run back above the London PM high here. Okay, and we know this well in advance. We've identified this as a seek and destroy profile. We've identified that price appears to be forming a turtle suit pattern. It's forming a breakaway gap here. Um, but even if you don't have, even if you're not, you know, that advanced yet to see that to see that this is probably a breakaway gap here that I'm highlighting with the cursor. If, if you're not that that advanced yet, what do you do? We'll wait till it trades back up into this SIBI and see if it treats it as an inverted fair value gap. Initially, you can see that it does, okay? And it, and it initially does treat it that way. But we form, what do we see here? What time is this little intermediate term low that I'm highlighting right here? Well, that's New York lunch. That's the start of New York lunch. Okay, so New York lunch f trades back into this volume imbalance that I'm highlighting with my cursor. We then displace higher during lunch and we're starting to disrespect this SIBI, this uh, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. If we close above, well, this is probably going to turn into an inverted fair value gap. Now, we, we already had a good idea that it was going to do that because we identified this as a seek and destroy profile where the week's profile range is probably going to be to run both sides of the book. But even if you weren't that advanced, wait until, wait until they see if this SIBI right here, I'm going to just highlight it, wait until to see if this forms an inverted bear value gap right here in the yellow box. As soon as you see that during the New York lunch hour that it looks like this is going to be an inverted fair value gap, well okay now we have pretty valuable information. At this point we have a very strong inclination that we're going to go and at least sweep the London PM high and that right there is a trade idea in and of itself. So sure enough the London PM high gets run by the New York PM high. Uh, sorry, not run, but swept. Okay. We then retrace down into this intermediate term low and, and uh, order block that um, the New York lunch short term low that I'm highlighting with my cursor. We don't run it. We don't sweep it. We keep this. Uh, we keep this sell side intact, and then we consolidate for the rest of the day. Now, the reason why I took a trade here on the Japanese yen futures and I took it long with five contracts. Why did I take it right here? Let's go down to a five minute time frame. Come down to a five minute time frame and I identified that it appeared to be respecting the consequent encroachment of this New York lunch short term low. Meaning that it's not wanting to trade into this New York lunch short term low liquidity pool just yet. Well, What does that mean? Well, that means it's probably going to want to either come up and sweep and run the current Asian high or maybe it even wants to come up and take out this New York PM high. I don't know exactly if it wants to just come out and tr and trade above or sweep this uh, Asian high or if it wants to come and sweep the New York PM high. But as soon as I saw that we had this displacement here, we had this fair value gap that we traded into, actually to be honest with you, I saw it as soon as we were respecting this consequent encroachment of this wick and that price was reversing off of it, which Michael does mention. Well, what do we see right here? So this is 0200 right here. Well, what is this? This is an Asian high, right? 
This is an Asian high. We're in a consolidation week right now. We're in a consolidation seek and destroy profile on the Japanese yen futures. So we're expecting that these these highs and lows on any time frame are probably going to um, turtle soup. We expect that they're probably going to turtle soup. And sure enough, we get that we're probably getting a turtle soup right here. We're probably coming back down probably to take out this New York lunch short-term low. But in any event, I saw that price was drawing up to this Asian high. Now, because top step has a profit limit, this was a top step trade, uh, this was actually my profit limit right here. So that, that's why you didn't see me hold on the trade further. Now, when I took the long here, I didn't know whether it wanted to just sweep this Asian high or whether it wanted to come and sweep the New York PM high. But I knew that it was going to draw up to either one of those highs. So I entered in. Let's go back to our entry model here. As you know, I my Asian silver bullet time frame, which Michael does not teach, I understand that. Um, my Asian time frame is from 2000 to 2100, which is the opening hour of the uh, Tokyo and Sydney, Australia uh, stock exchanges. Um, so it's Asian high here. And when I saw that we came down and we respected the consequent encroachment of this wick, 10 minutes after the setup time, I saw that we had this busy buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, displacement candle form. I saw that we traded a few pips into it. So I got long five contracts and I was aiming for at least this Asian high and maybe this New York PM high because I saw that we had left this New York PM PM high intact. And it looks like for now we're going to continue to keep it intact, although I'm not sure. So that's why, basically, that's that's every aspect of a trade, folks. I just gave it to you. I gave you the time that you want to be entering. I gave you what I was looking for when I entered it. Okay, I entered 10 minutes after my setup time. All right. And then finally, I gave you the exit. I gave you the draw on liquidity. That's it, folks. And it's Japanese yen futures. It doesn't have to be stock index indices. Oftentimes it's going to be, but it doesn't have to be. So the key takeaway of this video is what Michael talked about, which is highs and lows can be defined by the session in which they are formed. And you want to see how price is drawing to these session highs and lows. And he talked about that tonight. I recommend that you go watch his video on it. But start doing this, y'all. Remember that it, the ICT algorithmic theory is time and price and time and price. So when you're hovering your crosshair over these highs and lows, think to yourself, okay, is this a London high and low? Is this a London PM high or low? Is this a New York lunch high or low? These are just things that you want to notice, especially London. If you're trading Forex, you definitely want to notice if the, the higher low is forming in London. I'm just telling you, you do. So that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Um, you need to start classifying your highs and lows by the session in which they are forming. I'm going to give you the time frames one more time. Uh, if you've not already written these down, I recommend that you do. London AM session, 0200 to 0500. London PM session, 0500 to 0930. New York AM session, 0930 to 1200. New York lunch session, 1200 to 1330. New York PM session, 1330 to 1600. Asia, 2000 to 2230. And that's the Tokyo Stock Exchange AM session. With that, I'm going to bid you adieu. I hope that you start doing this with your own charts. Start classifying your highs and lows by the session in which they're forming. And then watching how price is interacting with that, using your other ICT concepts in conjunction with that, in order to build a narrative for where liquidity uh, should be drawing to. And so with that, we've discussed um, more concepts on your ICT draw on liquidity. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll talk to you soon. Um, all of my affiliate links are in the description box below. Please make sure to um, give this a uh, some sort of interaction, so a comment, a like, folks. I really want to um, make a secondary income from YouTube, so Please do interact with the video. You know it. You know that that boosts the video in the algorithm. So if I spent all this time giving you some, giving you a nice education here, pay it forward by giving me some interaction. 
That is all. Bye-bye.